Okay, so in this playlist of videos, I'm going to talk to you about algebraic proof, which is a combination of some stuff to do with proof and really just an opportunity to demonstrate a lot of the algebraic skills that you've learned over across uh, over the course of the GCSE. So I'm actually going to introduce this topic by having a look at the kind of question that we've got here and seeing if we can figure out what some of these keywords actually mean. And then we're going to look at some other keywords and then we'll actually attempt the question in just a second. So first of all, it says that we want to prove algebraically that the sum of the squares of any two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of four. Well, some of these things are pretty obvious what they're going to mean. So for example, we know that sum actually just means adding things together. So the sum is when you add something together. So we definitely know what this first term here means. And then the squares, well, that just means that you're going to take any particular number that you have and you're going to square it. That thing that we're actually referring to is a square. So referring to the squares is going to be taking a number and squaring them both. So we know what this part here means. It then says of any two consecutive even numbers. So consecutive, you've probably come across this word before, but consecutive means like next to. And we'll have a look at what that might look like algebraically in just a second. But for example, consecutive numbers could be like 3, 4 and 5 or 111, 112, 113. They are numbers that are next to each other. But rather obviously, I'm not going to patronise you with this part. We know what even numbers are. Even numbers are things like 2, 4, 6, 8. So when they're talking about consecutive even numbers, we're talking about things that are going 12, 14, 16. So they're the even numbers without any gaps in between them, because obviously the odd numbers wouldn't be, com uh, wouldn't be included. And then last of all, a multiple of 4. Well, we're going to have a look about how we might express a multiple of 4 algebraically. But in terms of what it actually means, I think it's pretty obvious that it's just something that is in the 4 times table. So let's just quickly go through some of these other parts here and see if we can add in any extra information. So instead of saying something to do with the sum, they might sometimes ask something about the difference. And the difference between two things is just found by subtracting them. You may remember from primary school, which is when the word product is used most commonly, that product is just the result of two things being multiplied together. So we've talked about squares just being anything that is squared. Now we're going to talk about even numbers and odd numbers in a bit more detail. I mean, it's pretty obvious that even numbers are things like 2, 18, 24, 154, stuff like that. But we want to try and think about what these might look like algebraically. Well, if you think of any whole number at all, think of any integer, and you multiply it by 2, you are guaranteed to get an even number. Um, even if it's a negative, you could get like negative 14, and you times that by 2, you get negative 28. That's definitely an even number. Even if you take an odd number, 3, and you times it by 2, you get 6. You always get an even number. So if you take any number that's an integer, let's say that it's n, and you multiply it by 2, then this thing that we have written here is an example of something that is an even number because any integer that you take and double it, it is going to be uh, an even number. So here we're just going to write down that n is an integer because obviously if n wasn't an integer, let's say it was 3.5, you could double it and get an odd number. So it's really important that this thing here is, um, is discussed. Odd numbers, very obviously. I guess I could have said some of these were negative as well for the evens. Odd numbers, anything that looks like this. Now, the way that you get an odd number is by taking an even number and adding one to it. Or you could alternatively take an even number and subtract one from it. So, I don't know, pick any even number like 54. If you add one to it, you get 55. If you take one away from it, you get 53, which are both examples of odd numbers. Now, there's loads of them. You could also have written 2n plus 3 or 2n minus 3. Probably the most common one that we're going to be coming across, though, is either the 2n plus 1 or the 2n minus 1. But we may be using some of these things later on as well. Now, consecutive means next to. So if you wanted to have some numbers that were consecutive, you could have n, then you could have n plus 1, if you wanted to have the number before that, we could say that it was n minus 1 as well. So you don't have to just start with n. You can clearly see that these are consecutive numbers. If we're talking about consecutive even numbers, though, you might say that you have 2n. The next even number would be 2n plus 2, etc., etc., like this. Last of all, if something is a multiple of 4, for example, well, that means that it could be expressed as something that has been multiplied by 4. So, for example, we know that, I don't know, 28 is a multiple of 4. 
Now, because 28 is a multiple of 4, we can show that it is by saying that 28 is equal to 4 multiplied by 7. Now, I've put it in brackets because we're going to see it in that kind of form when we do algebra. But you can show that something's a multiple of 4 by being able to write it in this particular way that we have here. So if I wanted to show that something was a multiple of 4, what you end up doing is wanting to say that you have 4 and then something in the brackets. And that's something inside the brackets that we have there. We would want that to be an integer because obviously you can divide things by four but we would want this thing inside this part here to be an integer. So now that we've got some of this language that we have here we're probably going to be able to actually answer this question that we have but before we actually answer the question I want to just have a, an actual look about what this statement is even talking about. So it says prove algebraically that the sum of the squares of any two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of four. Well, let's just actually check to see that this works with some numbers. Now, this here is numerical proof. This is not a proof at all. I shouldn't even say numerical proof. This is just kind of testing what it's even talking about. So let's take an uneven number. Let's take the even number 8, for example. The consecutive even number, so the next even number, is going to be 10. It wants us to have the sum of the squares of these numbers. And we want to see that it is a multiple of 4. So that means that I am going to take the 8 squared, which is 64. I'm going to add on 100, which is 164. And 164 is a multiple of 4 because it is 4 multiplied by 41. Now, this should work with any consecutive even numbers, even if we do some much bigger ones. So let's say that I was going to do 120 squared and the consecutive even number would be 122 squared. I'm going to just put that on the calculator to see what this comes to. So let's just clear this. So we're going to do 120 squared, if I can type it properly, plus 122 squared. That is 29284. And just to show you that that's a multiple of 4, if I divide it by 4, I actually do have a whole number. It is 4 multiplied by 7, 3, 2, 1. And both of these things, I could have written them here. I could have written 4 brackets 41 and 4 brackets 7, 3, 2, 1, just to show that actually this is um, a multiple of 4, just because we often use that sort of brackets that we have here. So that's just it numerically, but that doesn't prove anything because we've only shown it with two examples. And we want to show that this would work with any consecutive even numbers. So we're going to try and do this using algebra. Now technically we should say something like let n be an integer. So let's actually do it. Let's do it the proper way that I'd want you to do this at A level, but you don't need to do this part. So let n be an integer. So we then have one even number is 2n. The consecutive even number would be 2n plus 2. That would be the next even number that we have there. And we want to have the sum of the squares, like this. So this is actually what we're going to try and work out. We're going to try and see or prove that this thing is going to be a multiple of 4. So we want to end up with something where we can take a factor out of 4. Well, careful when you square this. This is 2n multiplied by 2n. So you're going to get 4n squared. Now, if you need to, you can always write these double brackets to help you to expand these brackets. So that's 2n plus 2 and 2n plus 2. When we expand these brackets, we're going to get a 4n squared plus a 4n plus a 4n plus a 4. So that is 8n squared plus 8n plus 4. Now, we want to be able to show that this thing is a multiple of 4. So I'm going to take a factor of 4 out. I'm going to factorize by 4 here. So I'm going to show that I have 4 multiplied by 2n squared plus 2n plus 1. Now, clearly, this thing is going to be an integer. So this is an integer multiplied by 4. Hence, the result is that it is a multiple of 4. So at the end, we can say, hence, and this is the part that feels more like an English lesson rather than a maths lesson. Hence, the sum of the squares of two consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of 4.
Okay, so I'm going to give you one to have a go at here, because this is the kind of exam style question that you might have here. And it's got some of the keywords that are from this list that we were looking at. So you may need to refer to that part of the video to have a go at this. It says, prove algebraically that the difference between the squares of any two consecutive odd numbers is always a multiple of eight. So this one's very similar to the previous one that we've just looked at. Pause the video here and have a go, but I'm going to get started on this one in just a second. So I'm going to begin by saying, let n be an integer. We're going to be finding the difference between the, the squares of any two consecutive odd numbers. So these consecutive odd numbers that we've got here, one of them could be 2n plus 1. For the other one, you could either do 2n plus 3, or you could do 2n minus 1. These are sort of odd numbers as they go up, OK? So you either saying it's uh, 2n plus 1, and then you could do the one above it or the one below it. Now, I am probably going to pick these two. I just kind of feel that it's slightly simpler because I'm just dealing with ones what rather than a three. But I guarantee if you do it with these, you're still going to get the correct answer. So let n be an integer. We're going to prove the difference between the squares. Well, this one's a bigger one. So I'm going to start with that one first for the subtraction. So I'm going to say 2n plus 1 squared. And it's a difference, which means subtract. 2n minus 1 squared. I'm going to calculate that and I'm going to hope to show that it is always a multiple of 8. Remember you can do the double brackets if they help you to visualize this. So we have the 2n plus 1 and the 2n plus 1. We have the 2n minus 1 and the 2n minus 1. But I'm going to go straight into expanding these. So there's going to be a 4n squared plus 2n plus 2n plus 1. And we're going to be subtracting, and this is where you have to be really careful that you're subtracting this expansion in brackets because that negative is going to apply to each separate part. So I'm now going to be expanding these brackets that we have down here. 2n times 2n is 4n squared. We then get minus 2n minus 2n, and the minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So the first four terms here, the 2n and the 2n becomes 4n. Those first four terms become this. And when we subtract this, you're going to get minus 4n squared. This is minus 4n, and it's being subtracted. When you subtract minus 4n, that's a minus times a minus, you're going to get a plus 4n. And then you're going to get a minus and a 1. That's going to be a minus 1, like this. So when we start tidying these things up, the 4n squared is going to be cancelled. The plus 1 is going to cancel with the minus 1. And so what we get left with here is... 8n. And this you don't have to write in this form, 8 brackets n. This is perfectly fine. It just now needs to search, say, hence the difference, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to finish writing this. I'm just going to say etc. But what you would say is hence the difference between any two consecutive or odd numbers is always a multiple of 8 because of the fact we've been able to show that it is being multiplied by 8. I'm going to do a couple of examples in the next video that use some other skills in algebraic proof. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.